Hello guys, today I'm talking about how G Idol's music went downhill after Sujin left, G Idol's got this vibe that's heavy, like they're not just confident, they're overconfident, and while I give them props for diving into social issues, but when it comes to how they're spitting out their message, it's a bit of a mess, their title tracks, like Nude, Tomboy, and Queen Card, are blunt to the point of being in your face, it's like they're not just trying to make a statement, they're trying to hammer it into your brain, the thing is, music's got to have layers and subtlety, but with g Idol, it's all laid out there, no finesse, no clever twists, just straight up literal lyrics, there's a line between getting your point across and just shouting it non-stop, so, while the intention is good, the execution? Not so much, it's like they're sacrificing the art of music for the sake of making a shock value statement, and that's where they lose me, especially when the girls are part of the system they criticize, Another thing I noticed is Soyan's producing and writing skills taking a nosedive. Do y'all remember their debut years with Ladada, Oh My God, and Lion, those were the total package, but now, the magic's kinda fizzled out. Especially with the English lyrics, Soyan's pen game isn't what it used to be, it's like she's lost that spark, that flow that made her stand out, and her English lyrics are hitting some sour notes, it's not just about the accent or the flow, it's the grammar and the phrasing that's throwing me off. If you're gonna rap in English, at least make it listenable, because her rapping has become all nasal and choppy. Now, to better explain myself, let me talk about each one of their songs. Let's start with Wife. This track was an experience, it'll definitely be remembered, but for all the wrong reasons, the song's repetitiveness could have been a catchy hook, but instead, it's like a broken record that you can't turn off. The lyrics are a jumble of phrases that sound like they were picked up from a game of Mad Libs Gone Wrong, and that line, I cook cream soup tasty coco loco? It's like they were trying to win a bet on how many nonsensical words they could fit into one sentence, vocally. It's a roller coaster that nobody wanted a ticket for, the highs are too high, the lows are too low, and the rap? It's cringe, it's awkward, and it's trying so hard to be cool. Furthermore, the music video is a visual cacophony that leaves you wondering if you accidentally hit the fast-forward button. It's a mishmash of colors and scenes that feel more like a fever dream than a coherent story, and the length of the song? It's like they knew it was a train wreck and decided to minimize the damage by cutting it short, but even at two minutes, it feels like an eternity. As for the TikTok baiting, it's transparent. The song feels like it was trying too hard to go viral, sacrificing musical integrity for a shot at social media fame. The attempt at a feminist message is commendable, but it's buried under layers of cringe and confusion. A single line about not wanting to be a cookie-cutter wife doesn't make a feminist. Anthem, especially when the rest of the song feels like a parody of itself, even the title track Super Lady felt like a parody, Super Lady is their weakest title track so far. The whole girl power anthem routine has been played out so much that it's starting to feel like a broken record, it's like, we get it, women are strong, but do we need to be beaten over the head with the same generic surface level message track after track? I smell a creative burnout. The English in the track is so off that it's got fans cooking up conspiracy theories about Soyin doing it intentionally. But let's call it what it is, sometimes bad English is just bad English, no need to dress it up as something more profound. Sorry, but it's like they're aiming for the preschool demographic with Super Lady. It's a far cry from the edgy vibe they had going on before Sujin left. The music video might be a visual treat, but the song itself? Not so much. It's like they're trying to sell us this image of fierce independence, but the lyrics are filled with mixed messages and hypocrisy. If you're going to put out a song about being super ladies, especially with members who are supposed to embody powerful women, you've got to put some real thought into it. The lyrics, the production, the whole package, it's got to be tight, otherwise, it's just another short forgettable track. Speaking of length, can somebody tell me why G Idol's last album had only 8 songs, but they still called it a full album, even Itzy's Born To Be Mini Album had 10 tracks, but here we are with G Idol's so-called second full album and it's just 8 songs? That's rich, and let's not even start on the length, only one track dares to push past the 3 minute mark, it's like they're serving us samples. The fans are thirsty for new tunes, I get it. But this constant pressure for groups to churn out music like they're on some sort of assembly line is ridiculous. It's no wonder the quality takes a nosedive. Writing and producing a solid album is an art, not a race. But hey, who cares about artistry when you can just pump out TikTok baits and call it a day? And the irony? The same fans who are screaming for more music are the first to throw shade when the quantity overshadows quality. It's a lose-lose situation for the groups. They're either stuck in a dungeon or hustling out half-baked tracks to keep up with the demand. Let's face it, the music industry has turned into a marathon of mediocrity, pumping out albums with more versions than there are songs, just to keep the cash register ringing. I bet these labels would straight up release eight tracks of two minute-long fart symphonies if it meant more sales, moving on. Let's talk about another questionable release, 
Queen Card, oh boy, Queen Card's attempt to tackle the heavy topics of beauty standards and social media influence was poorly executed, it was shallow, and Soyan's approach to such a complex issue feels like they're just skimming the surface. The song's vibe is supposed to be comedic and light, but it ends up feeling like a half-baked parody. The lyrics are a hot mess, it's like they threw words into a blender and hoped for the best, and the pronunciation? Let's just say it's a good thing music is a universal language because those English lyrics are getting lost in translation. Now, if any other group had dropped this track, they'd be getting roasted left and right, but gee idol? They seem to be skating by on charm and past successes, sure, they've got talent, but this song's lyricism is making me cringe harder than a dad joke at a dinner party. The song's supposed to be a throwback to the 2000s party anthems, but it's more like a jigsaw puzzle with missing pieces, the beats are all over the place and that pre-chorus sticks out like a sore thumb, it's like they're trying to channel the spirit of Pop's past, but it's coming off as a cover band that can't quite remember how the originals go, and let's talk about the contradictions, the songs critiquing consumerism while name-dropping Chanel bags. That's like a fast food ad telling you to eat your veggies, the references to Ariana and Kim are trendy now, but give it a minute, they'll age like milk, it's hard to tell if they're going for thought-provoking or just provoking their previous tracks, like Lion, hit the mark without trying too hard, but this, it's like they're aiming for shock value over substance, and a little advice for G-Idol, get an English consultant on board, Soyan's got a version, but when it comes to English lyrics, it's like deciphering code, the whole group could use a hand in making sure their English lines actually make sense because right now, it's a linguistic labyrinth, next up, let's talk about their first English mini-album, Boy Oh Boy, this AP was a choice, especially the title track I want, the girls tried to. Give that I'm the boss and no one can touch me vibe, but it came off as childish and fake with no authenticity, maybe because this was created by Western producers and not Soyan, which is why it seemed like a cheap imitation, G-Idol usually has this polished, mature sound, but this? This is like they grabbed a knockoff version from a street vendor, the authenticity? Non-existent, it's like they're playing pretend at being badasses, and the lyrics? Some Western writers always give K-pop groups really mediocre lyrics, which makes you wonder if they just think bad or silly lyrics are what's expected in the K-pop genre because of their preconceived ideas about it. It's not just lazy, it's insulting, but hey, at least Mayan's vocals in the pre-chorus are a saving grace in a sea of mediocrity. The song itself? Repetitive is an understatement. The chorus is supposed to be the hook, but it's more like a loop of disappointment. It's got this minimalist, toxing thing going on that's trendy, sure, but it doesn't hit the mark, it leaves you hanging, waiting for a drop that never comes, it's clear they saw the success of tracks like Eve Psyche and the Bluebeard's Wife and thought, hey, let's slap some 90s deep house beats on there and call it a day, but they forgot one tiny detail, a melody that actually sticks, the pre-chorus and bridge, they've got some drama, but the rest is just the girls listing off their wish list like it's a spoken word session, the chorus could have been the moment, the big bang, but it fizzled out faster than a cheap sparkler, and don't get me started on the rest of the album, it's like a cringe fest wrapped in mediocrity, except four eyes roll, which had a glimmer of hope, if only the lyrics weren't that cringy. Moving to another one of their Korean title tracks, Nude, I'm starting to sound like a broken record. But Nude felt like a concept-driven roller coaster that forgot to pack the actual music, the vaudeville turned K-pop idea is intriguing, but execution matters, unfortunately, the song lacks a solid chorus and memorable verses, instead, we get excessive camera mugging, Soyan's got vision, I'll give her that, but even the best ideas can benefit from collaboration, bringing in a fresh pair of eyes, or ears, in this case, to refine the lyrics and production, could help her a lot, it's like cooking a dish, sometimes you need someone to taste it and give feedback, lastly, we have Tomboy, I blame Tomboy for all this, if it hadn't turned out to be a mega hit, I don't think all this would have happened, this track reflects everything I've been rating about, weird vocal delivery, empty chorus, unnecessary swear words, try hard energy, and questionable lyrics as always, I'm a tomboy this is my attitude, this should have stayed in the drafts, I know some may accuse me of xenophobic and racism for calling out Soyan's lyrics, but I think that's hypocritical, just look at the stark contrast in how non-Koreans and K-pop idols are treated when it comes to language usage, when a non-Korean attempt to speak Korean, they are often met with ridicule and criticism, with some even being labeled as Koreaboo or shamed for their attempts, but on the other hand, when idols attempt to speak English, fans praise their fluency and attack anyone who dare to criticize their pronunciation or grammar. Come on now, G idols been playing fast and loose with their grammar, and not for the sake of the tune, they could have nailed it without the slip-ups, so what gives? This smells more like a shortcut than a style choice, now, if an American artist butchered Korean the same way, there'd be an uproar, and rightly so, language and music isn't just about the vibe, 
it's about respect, sure, nobody's expecting linguistic gymnastics, but at least get the basics right, it's not about crafting a masterpiece every time, it's about not making us cringe, and that's all for today, thanks for watching.